Hi there, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Now today I have a new type of video for you that I'll do once in a while on my channel, and I call this series Since You Asked. In these videos, which will be shorter, I will answer some questions that I get often, either over on my blog, my email, or YouTube comments. Today is all about the inside of my cards. I'll be honest, I keep it simple, but I have a trick that works really well for me and wanted to share it with you. I will also talk about what I do on the back of my cards. So I thought the best way to demonstrate what I do on the inside and back of cards is to share a card and then share the inside and back. I usually do these things off screen after a video. Today we'll do it on screen. For this card, I'm using a new club from Spellbinders. This is the June 2022 Large Die of the Month Club. So this is something you can sign up for on Spellbinders. Each month, they have a new release. They have lots of different options. This is the Large Die of the Month Club. I use these almost every month because the value is incredible and the designs are always unique. This one is probably my favorite all-time club from Spellbinders. I love the intricacy of these designs and how all you have to do is glue die cuts together to create a beautiful card. I went through my scrap stash and chose some colors to use for these die cuts. I die cut them all off screen and now I'm just gluing them together. I'm not going to show the process because it's easy. You just follow along. The pieces fit together very easily. The nice thing about this design is you can create two to create a mirrored card front, or you could just use one part. And there are other dies included in that set to make additional pieces that I didn't end up using, including a hello die. I just decided to do two of these arranged pieces, glue one on the top and one on the bottom. I need to find the middle point on my card just to make sure it's centered. And my sentiment will go there in between our two arranged die cuts. This is a note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm using my T-roller to draw a line at the halfway point. I'm gonna cover that so it doesn't matter how dark it is. Now this little banner die cut is included in that set. And on it, I white heat embossed a sentiment from the Altenew Sentiment Strips stamp set. It says, thanks for everything. I wanted that to be white heat embossed on a light colored cardstock. So it just kind of blend in with the rest of the bold card. All right, so I glued one of the arrangements on the top and I put something heavy on it while it dries, and then I'll glue the other on the bottom. So for me, this is a pretty fast card to pull together, and it's enjoyable because it's just mindlessly putting die cuts together, which I find to be very therapeutic and something I enjoy. Stay tuned over on Instagram because I plan to make a bunch of cards like this in different color combinations, and I'll be sure to share them in my stories. So now that my card is complete, let's talk about the inside of the card. Now this particular card base I made was a little bit lighter weight cardstock. I like to use a very, very heavy weight, 110 pound cover weight cardstock for my card bases so they aren't floppy. We don't like floppy cards. And by the way, if you want to learn more about cardstock weights for note card bases and such, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. Okay, so since this note card is a little thinner, I like to put a white cardstock insert in the inside. This adds some stability, keeps our card standing up straight when on display, and it also makes a spot for you to write your personal message on the inside. So this piece of white cardstock I cut to be, um, let's see, it was about five and a quarter by four inches and put that right onto the inside. Now for me, this gives a nice finished look and it makes our card stronger. You can use very inexpensive cardstock for this. You don't need to use the good stuff. This is just a 110 pound Nina Classic Crest because that's what I like to use for almost everything. This is what I normally do to make a card base a little bit stronger if I feel it is a little flimsy. On this one, I noticed, however, that the front of the card felt flimsy too because I glued so many die cuts on the front. So for this one, I'll add another piece on the inside for support and cut to the same size, but on the back side of the front of the card. I don't do this often, only if my cardstock is really thin. I do think it gives a nice finished look and looks beautiful on the inside. Now here's the thing. Some people like to stamp and decorate the inside of their cards. I don't normally do so, but you definitely can. I'll talk about that later. I like to leave the inside of my cards pretty much blank so that I can write a personal message that makes the card even better. 
But lately, I have been using a removable insert on the inside of the card so that the recipient can remove it and pass the card on to another if they like. And I've really liked how this works, and I know folks have passed the card on, which makes me really happy. To make the removable inserts, I use Avery Removable ID Labels. These are full-size sheets that have the stickiness kind of of a post-it note, so it's easy to remove. They're 8.5 inches by 11. From this, I cut a bunch. Now, I mostly make A2 card sizes, so I'm cutting a bunch down to be a little bit smaller than an A2 card. So these are five and a quarter by four inches. You can create a hundred of these inserts from one pack of those ID labels. I also do cut some to be different sizes for different size cards, just slightly smaller than whatever your card base is. So I have some that work for five by seven, mini slimline, and so on and so forth. Mostly use A2, so here are a bunch of them ready to go. I do like to stamp a message on these inserts so the person knows they can remove it. This is the Simon Says Stamp card sharing stamp set. I love this. It's an older one that I use a lot. In fact, I've done a video before showing other ways to use it for card inserts. I'll link to it up here on the top right. However, since filming that video, I have started doing these removable pieces that have the stick on the back, and I really like this. So let me show you how I do this. I just stamp one of these on the bottom of those removable inserts. So this is that little self-sticky sheet that's cut to five and a quarter by four. I place one of the images on the bottom of it, bottom center, into my MISTI stamping tool, but you could use an acrylic block if you prefer. I like to stamp this with a medium gray ink. This is a gray ink from Pink Fresh Studio. You could use whatever color you want, whatever ink type you want. I like the gray because it's a little more subtle, but is definitely something that they can see. So with this message on the bottom, the recipient knows to peel this off and they can send that card on to someone else too. And there's an empty space behind it in the card where they can write their message. Now you don't need a stamp set to do this. You could instead just write a little PS on the bottom telling them that they can remove this and pass it on. But I do find the stamp set helpful because I can do a bunch of these at once. So I do change up the sentiment, use one of the other ones from that card sharing set, and I have lots of these in a stack by my envelopes ready to go for any time I send a card out. I started doing this a couple months ago and I really like doing it. I also like to create some that are horizontal in case I do a landscape card, but I mostly do portrait cards, the tall ones. So that's what I created the most inserts for. Now, say I create a card where I do stamp a sentiment on the inside, kind of up towards the top center. If that's the case, I just take one of these inserts and trim it down so it's smaller. And I put it on like the bottom inside so that the sentiment still shows above it but I do have that removable piece where I can write my personal sentiment. Another option is you can stamp on these inserts and decorate them, and that will make the inside match the outside. Okay, so now I have my completed card from before, and I just can peel off the back of one of these inserts and just stick it right onto that piece on the inside. Now, the nice thing about this is it is just the right amount of stick. That's why I'm really excited about using these Avriel sticky sheets. It's like a post-it note, but the entire back has that stickiness to it, so it stays there nicely until the recipient wants to remove it. So I would just on here write my personal message. I could stamp a sentiment if I want to, and then I know that the recipient can pass this card on to someone else after they've enjoyed it. Now, another option, and I know one a lot of people like to do, is to decorate the inside of your card to match the outside. Here's a card I did in a video a few days ago. I'll link to it up here on the top right. But I used some extra die cuts and an extra sentiment on the top inside. You can see I have that white cardstock there, a place to write my personal message. In this case, I would just cut my insert a little bit shorter and just put it in that open white space on the bottom so they can remove that and pass it on. So you still can decorate this if you want to. I haven't put the insert in this one just yet, but I plan to later. Okay, I thought I'd talk briefly about what I do on the back of my cards also. I use a personalized stamp from Bossy Jossie. Now Jossie over at Bossy Jossie is a wonderful human being. She does lots of personalized gifts and one of them is personalized stamps. 
So I wanted to make some share handmade kindness theme stamps available for the back of cards. And I asked her if she would make them. She said yes. So my graphic designer designed them and she's making them. I'm not getting any money out of this. This is just to make them available and to support my friend. There are many designs available. I'm just sharing a few of them here. These are cling stamps, so you can just attach it to an acrylic block or use it in a stamping tool, which is what I do. Now, after I've made a bunch of cards, put the insert in all of them, I'll just set this up in my stamping tool and stamp on the back of a bunch of cards at once. It just saves some time, or you could do it as a card is completed. So I just line it up with the back center of the card and stamp it with black ink. If I do a white card, sometimes I stamp it with a lighter gray ink just to make it look a little bit softer. I like this particular design the most. I like that it has my website and my name on it, but you could definitely skip any lines if you want to and just have your name on it if you prefer. So really what I do on the inside of my cards and the back of my cards is very clean and simple. I like the focus to be on the front of the card where the design is and the personal message inside. But definitely do whatever you think works best for you. If you want to decorate the inside, go to town. It is a fun way to keep the creativity going. All right, if you're interested in any of these supplies, they're linked below in my YouTube description. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you. If you are interested, I'll link to a couple other related videos here at the end ones that I mentioned throughout this video, and I will be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching.